हाँ ओके सो या सो बिटवीन जावा एंड जावा स्क्रिप्ट देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंस बिकॉज दे आर टू डिफरेंट प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेजेस विथ द सेम फर्स्ट नेम और फर्स्ट नेम मिडिल नेम वट एवर नेम जावा स्क्रिप्ट वॉज क्रिएटेड आफ्टर जावा वॉज क्रिएटेड जावा स्क्रिप्ट वॉज क्रिएटेड फॉर द स्पेसिफिक पर्पज ऑफ रनिंग इन द ब्राउसर to to be run over uh, the internet uh, or, or, or to make websites interactive and all of that whereas java was created uh, before javascript it, uh, it was java is essentially a, a programming language designed for all kinds of use uh, it was meant to be a replacement for c++ or those kinds of languages to run on browsers to run on uh, for devices uh, and tea machines coffee machines all those uh, stuff so in fact a lot of uh, older systems and even today a lot of systems that rely on uh, what do we say uh, large teams working together still use java uh, like amazon or google all of these people use java a lot uh, on the other hand javascript is also now becoming increasingly popular and a lot of people use javascript also but uh, for the the purposes of uh, you know looking at it as a programming language they both uh, kind of same in the sense uh, they both do the same kind of uh, uh, variables functions logic passing things around those kinds of things except in our use case for uh, sharing uh, in a google sheets we can't uh, get uh, java to run on a computer uh, we can only get uh, uh, this thing javascript to run on the computer so <clears throat> uh yeah i'll have to figure out a way to keep my phone not switched off uh, hey. hello hey i uh, so i would like to take the opportunity to ask a more general question so what is like difference between programming languages or is it not a question at this stage maybe but yeah i'm curious like if someone has to learn a programming language uh, which one should they start with or like how will they decide and you know a general difference between the programming languages why are there so many and all that hmm. uh, uh, that's a very relevant question um uh how how do i answer that though um let me do one thing um let me do this thing let me open uh, there is a page on wikipedia called hello world okay so this is a simple uh, program that is typically used uh, to to show off programming to people uh, like the essential idea is when you run the program it should display hello world hello comma world and a, a exclamation mark on the screen so um, and uh, just for comparison uh, in our case in javascript the way it would look like is uh, let's see we don't need all this but nevertheless i'll just write out function hello world and i'll say logger dot log and say hello world so this would be what a hello world program looks like in javascript um although they have not edited okay now uh, we'll we'll see the wikipedia page 
for many languages how it looks like so uh, this is I suppose this is C uh, there is a main function and then it calls the printf function and says hello world and then this is another I think this is B language uh, and then we go further down it has examples in all the languages I mean not all the languages like but many languages so I don't know what language this is, but it says write hello world that will do that. Adal goal Apple script basic. So basic is one one language I used uh, very early in my life. So uh, in basic you just have to write print hello world and uh, it'll print hello world. Um, in C, like we saw earlier, you have to do this. In C plus plus, so you can see there's a slight difference between. Uh, C and C++ here uh, we did something called uh, including a standard input output uh, header and here we uh, use something called IO stream input output stream so basically when C became C++ there were some additional features which allowed these kinds of stuff to happen and then this is something called C sharp which is what Apple's uh, oh, sorry uh, C sharp is uh, uh, dot net or Microsoft uh, programming language uh, uh, then there's something called closure D dart so this is all doing the same thing it's just when we run this program it will print hello world on the screen um, Fortran go go is a very new programming language uh, created by Google uh, for their use but now it's a uh, public use like it's used by a lot of people. So here's Java. Um, uh, Java has this concept called object-oriented programming. So everything in Java has to be an object. So here, um, and then yeah, I mean, and then there's a class, and then uh, methods and all that. So uh, JavaScript is right under that because uh, Java and JavaScript share the first name, like we said. So in JavaScript, uh, we have many ways. So console.log it will print uh, right in the console so the, there's a um, there are multiple places javascript can uh, output to not just the screen it can you can put content inside the web page it can put content in a um, box and things like that so for example this is the console i just opened it with uh, if I go to menu more tools web developer tools Sorry, I close that. More tools, web developer tools. I can go to the consoles. This is the JavaScript console. Uh, that every page has a console like this. Uh, I don't know if you can clear that. Uh, let me try clearing that. Yeah, got clear. So if I type console.log hello world, it, it prints hello world. So, I mean, um, this is another. Um, uh, reason why JavaScript is very popular because you can just uh, if you have a browser you you have everything you need to run a program in JavaScript so for example if you wanted this let's go back to this one I'm gonna take uh, uh, the demo function that we created last time I'm gonna run that yeah now we have a demo function which takes three inputs and returns uh, the output. So um, that's just uh, us running JavaScript within the browser, within the console web developer tools. Um, that, that so uh, yeah. So basically, Java look, JavaScript looks like that. Um, and then Java looks very different. Uh, although uh, when you start uh, looking at many program languages, they will look the same. For it, for for the, for the matter, this looks. I mean, the hello world function uh, string has to be the same anyhow. And then uh, uh, the way you print it is a bit different. So that's the only difference. And then Julia has this. Kotlin has this. So Kotlin is a program language used to develop. Android apps, mm. uh, yeah. I mean, 
it, it can be it can replace java in many ways but it's mostly used uh, for android app development these days uh <laughs> this lol so this is some uh, random programming language i think someone would have created this just for fun uh, lua nim see all, all these programs are doing the same thing so the reason i showed this page and specifically this page is to kind of uh, show that uh, although the thing that we want to do is the same there are different ways to get it done so if you look between python and r here they are actually the same code uh, in print and bracket and hello world and then r has print and brackets and hello world but uh, uh, that doesn't mean that they are the same language they are totally different languages and uh, uh, the syntax so the what this is the, the different ways to write a thing is called a syntax the syntax might be different uh, for different languages or even be same like in this case but uh, the typical ways uh, uh, the choice of a language influences the outcome that we are uh, interested in is when the language um, has a larger ecosystem around it so for example um, uh, r the r programming language which uh, some of you are already using uh, has a huge ecosystem of soft um, statistical analysis mathematics physics those kinds of uh, academic functionalities in the um, in the form that you can quickly consume with an R programming language. So you can install those libraries and quickly do those uh, computations within R. Uh, similarly, Python recently has become a very nice place for artificial intelligence, machine learning, those kinds of uh, uh, research or work. And therefore, the, a lot of people use Python these days when they're working on uh, machine learning or things like that. Uh, JavaScript, like we saw earlier, is, is there in the browser. And therefore, if you are writing a, a, a website or an app that runs in the browser, a game that runs in the browser, any of those, you would typically use JavaScript uh, to write your code. So um, Ravi, I'm not exactly sure what is the, uh, do you have a, a further question that can um, verify what exactly you're looking for. Yeah, a further question would be, you know, uh, for example, C++ was already there, which is an objective, uh, sorry, sorry uh, object oriented programming language. Uh, so Java was created later. Now, like what does Java do over C++ or like, for example? Hmm. Hmm. So, uh, so C++ and Java has, uh, for example, exactly uh, the example that you picked up. Which, that's a very, very, very interesting example with historic relevance because at a time when uh, Java was being um, kind of uh, chosen or kind of becoming popular, a lot of people would be saying that, uh, why do I need Java? I already have C or C++ and all that. But uh, the thing that uh, is different between Java and C++ or C for uh, uh, is the uh, level at which uh, that program uh, is written. So for example, in this, we cannot really see that because this is a very simple program, but at a, at a higher level, when you have to manage memory, uh, let me try to see. Uh, Okay, program to add to numbers in C++. And we can also do in Java. Uh, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm opening some random website, okay. It's not that I recommend these websites or anything. Uh, here's Java. Okay, do they do the same things? 
they don't. Or let's do this Java C++. That's the easier way to answer this. Waste, 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 waste. Okay, there's no code example. Uh, by example, I'm I'm just showing the Google searches I do because it might be useful in some ways. Uh, Okay, so this particular part I'll come back to. Okay, that's not there. There it is. Okay, so this in this particular example, if you can see it clearly, um, C plus plus is doing. Um, you you essentially, if you want to get uh, uh, you if you want to store some uh, complicated memory and access, what is stored at that point uh, in in memory so you are essentially able to manipulate uh, the the actual memory on the computer whereas in java uh, for doing the same thing you will not be able to actually test the uh, direct uh, memory so there is no, nothing called a raw pointer and therefore you are unlikely to be able to do something that's harmful for your entire system. So Java, Java by making it impossible to directly access your memory, um, it makes it less likely that you will do something which will corrupt the memory or cause a problem where you, you are writing to a wrong part of the memory or you are reading from the wrong part of memory and things like that. And that will, of course, make it uh, less powerful in some ways because you are not able to directly manipulate memory and it might even make it slower. But in return, you get a lot of safety. So uh, for things where you wouldn't want uh, uh, a lot of speed, but at the same time, you want a lot of safety, like say you're, uh, you're shipping a uh, <laughs> I mean, it would be nice to have both speed and safety, but uh, there uh, you're shipping a container to Mars or a, or a machine to Mars and you would want uh, it to work correctly, even if it works slowly, uh, because you can't fix the bug later on. You would use a language that is more, uh, more structured like Java, such that uh, it doesn't allow you to shoot yourself in the foot. That's one difference. And then, so the, again, this is memory management. That's one of the biggest difference I know of. I mean, there are a lot of differences, but uh, uh, and then the other thing is Java. When you have a Java program, it is compiled into something called a um, byte code. Uh, I mean, Java machine. So it's it's compiled into an intermediate form which is then run on a java machine and then this java machine uh, it supports many kind of platforms okay i'm using these words deliberately so that uh, you can you can read up later on if you find it interesting but java machine supports different platforms like say an android phone or a big computer or a uh, mainframe computer or a supercomputer and all of that and then you can write the code once and compile it once and it will run in different different places that's the 
that's the essential idea with uh, the way java is java programs are compiled and run whereas uh, c++ code you compile it on the same computer as or the same kind of computer that you want it to run in so th there's no virtual machine with c++ it directly runs on the computer but java code typically runs on a virtual machine so th there are these kinds of differences in the it's not just a syntax that's different the the, the the paradigms or the way it runs all of that is different and these choices would be made by the language designers based on what they want the language to be for and uh, uh, that would make a lot of difference in how things are designed as well so another example is uh, i mean this is applicable both to java and c++ uh, they they are both uh, designed in ways that uh, when a newer version of the language is released the the older code will continue to work without without a lot of changes it won't make the old code not work that's called backwards compatibility and uh, uh, that is kind of important in a lot of uh, industries because you might run some software you might write some software which you would want to run for decade or two decades so you wouldn't want uh, your code which was working perfectly just because you upgrade updated the language to a newer version you wouldn't want the code to fail uh, but uh, in in some other languages those considerations wouldn't be there uh, they they don't care about uh, um, what code you wrote they just want to move fast move forward very fast so i i, I don't know if, uh, an example for sure but uh, yeah python for example in uh, python 2 when python 3 was released uh, there was a lot of changes which made uh, <clears throat> very useful features which broke backward compatibility so if you had code written in python 2 it wouldn't run in python 3 and that was a again no language designer would like to do all of that they would like to keep it the same way but then uh, for some languages it's okay to sometimes do it for the sake of uh, uh, better performance or newer features and things like that but for some languages it may not be so these kinds of considerations just like practical real world may all these uh, things are there uh, those things would be there uh, for every language pros and cons will be there yeah nice so that was very interesting comparison yes. okay so uh, let me go back to what we were doing last week. Uh, is it a chronological evolution of language? So it's just very. Hmm. So so I think. Um, yeah. No, I think while you were explaining, that kind of got answered. But if there was anything you would want to add. Mm, yeah, I think maybe I'll add one point that um, it's also about uh, who's building languages and why they're building. Uh, in 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 real world, people wouldn't be able to use a language unless others also spoke the same language. So they uh, so it's very unlikely that people will create new languages for speaking to each other because of the pain and time it takes for someone else to learn it's impractical in social life but in computer world you might create a language just for your own use case so um, uh, for example i found uh, so this was created this is something called hair language this is created just like two three months back because one person wanted to build their own language and it for you do not need another person for running your language in your programming language because you can compile it and run it in your computer that means every individual uh, who who fancies uh, writing a programming language might create their own language and uh, 
even in the case of uh, people who are learning computer science who want to learn programming language creation they would create their own languages um, uh, i do not think it works the same way for spoken languages because it necessarily requires more than one person to be able to use a language of spoken language usefully i suppose that extra point made some sense we also saw that lol code thing right the, the, these are <laughs> there are so many of these esoteric programming languages um they uh, they have they are basically created for fun um and uh, i mean not always for fun but see <laughs> this is some bifunge language this is a hello world in bifunge i suppose um you know, this is hello world in brain fuck uh this is all doing the same thing that we saw earlier okay mm yeah th this is probably not hello world uh this is a high world but nonetheless uh, so and the, see this is a visual programming language i suppose uh yeah it's an art kind of programming language so um some of these things uh, are there, there's some of these are art um a lot of for, for a lot of people in programming or in computers uh, it's it's also a form of art they, where they are expressing themselves through programs and therefore they don't really worry about uh, the utility of it or things like that so if there are linguists who would create languages for fun so i mean the human languages for fun then probably that is uh, applicable for human languages too okay so i'll come back to this one now i don't remember fully where we stopped but i think uh, i think the last thing we did was uh, to try to make this work with savanita and others because uh, their third in savanita's case uh, b4 is empty and uh, it's causing an error and in others case even uh, b5 and c5 are empty as causing an error so um, what's happening is uh, can anyone guess what's happening or just remind ourselves what what we were doing till now in the sense of what is this demo function doing it is just con con connect concatenating first letters of um, components of the name of each person okay so um does it really know uh, whether it's a name or uh, whether it's not the, the demo function the demo function does it know whether it is a name or not yeah. no it's if i you are putting strings uh, Right, right. So if I'm say writing, uh, what is this? Sorry. If I'm say writing uh, uh, random things here, let's say Martinur, Bangalore, Jatiskar, and Kela, something like that here, and I passed that to this. To K five, I'm passing. W would it care that this is not a name of a person? I'm assuming you said no, because as far as demo is concerned, 
all it is worded about is this input this input and this input now uh, now now the original question i was asking was any idea why these errors are coming um, and which line to be crossing up so the upper key when you do input and you are composing it with the upper upper case function so it gives a error right because there is no second letter in that case in in, in that cell right hmm. so shall i try removing that not going to do upper case will it work now Uh, sorry to interrupt. Hmm. Uh, would it be possible to give like a quick, like a minute of recap on what is happening here? I I didn't attend last time. Sorry about that. If it's possible to give in a brief this thing, uh, otherwise I will just watch the video once uploaded. So basically, uh, can you show me that? Uh, spreadsheet i will try to uh, summarize so uh, basically we did this thing that we have first name middle name last name of persons and for example we want to have a program which gives us the initials of people right so so akshay s dinesh would be asd and juda d parera would be jdp for example so that is what we are doing so can you uh, go back to the uh, basically we are trying to make a program which does that can you go back to the program so I can, yeah. so here we have a, a function called demo that we have defined and it takes three inputs so input one input two input three and uh, the first so the next line is uh, we have defined something called space is a variable right space is a variable set to a value which is space right and first letter would be would be just in whatever you put in the input one it will uh, uh, it will take the first so the input one bracket zero means it is taking the first letter of the of that input one so in the input one if you if you put for example bottle it will uh, give you uh, b input one bracket zero means the first letter so the computer counts it from zero one to three and so on so bottle will give you yeah like that so you will input zero will give you b and then uh, dot two upper case means Uh, we are making that b as a per case that input z whatever comes out of input zero goes to a per case similarly for all the inputs we are doing we are defining first letter second letter third letter and then in that 11th line return function uh, the the return thing we are uh, basically saying uh, to return this as a concatenation of these things so first letter Plus a space plus second letter plus a space. So first letter, if you if you put input one is Bombay, the first letter would be capital B. Then it will be a space. And second, if you put input two as say Delhi, it will be D. And third as Bangalore, it will be D. Prati. Yeah, got it. Thank you. Uh, question for you, Swati. Then, uh, if I make uh, this become this, how how will the output change now? I made I put a hyphen here. Yeah, so it would basically be like B hyphen D hyphen D. Yeah. Uh, okay. That works. Fine. So uh, now what we are trying to do, Swati, is that 
if okay uh, let me copy this there, there is an error we are getting here it says s undefined and p so uh, initially there was dot to uppercase here we removed that and now we are getting this Ravi uh, it changed not an error anymore I think it um, so it, there is no input to so it is undefined mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what what I would like to do if there is no middle name then it should not say undefined but it should say SP so we need right. to modify something accordingly so where would we modify that? In which uh, line? I think it, it, it will require some if condition. If, if input to is undefined or something, it should return or ignore something. I don't know exactly. Okay, let's do that. So I'm going to implement your logic just so that I know the, because I know the syntax, I'm just going to write it like this. If input to is equal to empty, is what it do you want? Three, uh, three, three equals to or two equals to? There are uh, three yes, you can do that as well. Uh, there's a tiny difference between them, uh, but it doesn't matter for now. So if that is empty, then we can't. Then return only um, like. In the return, you ah. just remove the second letter plus space thing, right? Okay, so you need an if here. Okay, so I'm gonna say if input to is equal to MP, return copy of this, copy that, and remove that. Make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just put an else uh, just to make it uh, easier to read. Does it work? Can I try that? So, what does it mean when you say if uh, in input to double equals to and then there is a space between inverted commas or not? What does it say? No. What so this is mean? just this is just an empty string because in this case here we do not have anything. Um, okay, okay, okay. And so it is checking whether the input to is empty or not. If it say, if it finds oh. it, em it empty, then it will execute this block, right? right. Uh, that so if, I, you if, I, if I put a space here, uh, let let me do one thing. Um, let me. Uh, so I just so what I did is I commented out that change. So this is still behaving as the as in the past. Now I'm just gonna say here I didn't put a space. Okay. Now I'm gonna put a space here. Can can you guess what is gonna happen now uh, when I put a space here? I didn't press enter. Yet. You didn't press what? Oh, you didn't. I didn't press. Huh, that's why it's not updating. Except for except for undefined, it will be a space. Yeah. Let's try that. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Only when the so, input is not there, it is not able to know what to do okay. because the function needs three inputs to give an output. Yes. So now I'm gonna you run your original suggestion. So um, yeah, uh, before I run the uh okay it'll or uh, one second <laughs> let me save let me do that once more yes so uh yeah time to guess what will happen if i add revise suggestion to and run this Any guesses? Uh, will will this uh, huh. uh, 
I think I I I think it will work. But then every time we'll have to add like if this is missing, if that is missing. So I was just wondering if there can be a like a blanket thing if any is missing. Good thinking. That's a good thinking. So uh, let uh, yeah, we'll come to that. I want to know will it work for uh, these two and this and this? Will it work for two, three, four, and five rows? It will work for the only for the first three, like two G, three G, four G, because hmm. we didn't we didn't tell it, uh, what 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 to do when. So in the last one, it will only um, remove the second. I think because we didn't tell what to do when input three is not there. Thanks to me. Um, does anyone want to uh, predict what the output will be for um, for uh, G four and G five? The exact output, character by character. I'll show you the code also if you want. For the fourth one, I think it will be S hyphen P. For the fifth one, it will be A hyphen undefined undefined. A hyphen undefined hyphen undefined. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, anyone else? Uh, any other? Predictions. Oh, sorry. The fifth one will be a hyphen undefined. No, a hyphen. Sorry, it's undefined. A hyphen undefined. Undefined. Uh, who who agrees with Swati? I agree. Okay, that's very. Who else? It's a chat. Did I create a poll? Uh, yes. Do you agree with Swati's prediction? Who is abstaining? Darren. That's bad. Arun is also abstaining. Okay. Uh, fine. So everyone else says yes. Uh, and let's run this now. Yes. So I just saved it. So this is the result. So that's working well and i hope you already know how that's working because you predicted how it is going to work now how do we fix this uh, last undefined Can just do the same with input three, I think. Uh, so you can. Uh, is there an or function like if, if it, like it checks for input two or input three? If any one of them is like input one or input two or input three, something like that. There's some or function, right? Uh, yeah, you can have an or. So if I do this. Or so this is an or you can read this as or this will do 
if either input 1 is empty or input 2 is empty uh, it will do first letter plus third letter and this if yeah. it does not cover the case of and you have to do and no i'm saying like what does or mean like usually in in in, in mathematics it will mean that that it does cover the case of or and as well both being empty yes so yeah. or or is a i don't know if it's called an inclusive or an exclusive or but basically uh, this or what it does is if this is empty uh, it will do this if this is empty it will do this if this and this are empty also it will do this so if any anything is empty it will immediately do this but if oh, input 1 is empty we can't say return first letter right correct so So we can obviously make uh, three cases like yeah. that, that just we did for input two, but maybe the, yeah, there's a loop way of doing this as well. Just tell me the uh, non loop or whatever the original way of doing it. Huh? Just tell me whatever comes to mind. Don't worry about optimizing it or uh, loop. Because I'm typing, I can type. Yeah, so you can say that if i is less than equal to 3 or something. No, no, what I'm saying is don't worry about uh, loop. Just tell me the logic. There are only two words, right? Okay. So it will check if any any of them is any of the input 1 or 2 or 3 is okay. empty. Uh, like there's no input and then it um, so let us think how to do it it will remove it has to remove that letter Darren you are abstaining from the whole class Arun neither of you I heard from And Vaishnavi is stuck with mobile. So, actually, mobile does support uh, talking. I'm talking through mobile. Yeah, just think of the logic and even if you have got it half let's try it out let's not try to find the correct answer at the first attempt because this is for learning And watch the video will share to update. So maybe we can do it as before. If input mm -hmm. is there, then we'll... so add another in if input one is. So uh, here is a quick thing. In our four pay people, there is nobody with input one as empty. So don't worry about that for now. Only worry about input one. Um, so there is a um, else if thing or what? Uh, else, else if or something, right? How do you put another uh, condition? Uh, I can put another condition. Where do you want to? Uh, yeah, if input 3 is empty. Yeah. 
is empty. Yeah, do that. Return. Just remove the space plus second letter from this. Oh, sorry. Space, space, space plus. No, no, no. Space plus third letter. Okay. Is that it? Put one more on the uh, input two and three missing, then return only first letter. Okay, so if uh, so I'm gonna check this one first. Input two is empty, and then input three is empty. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Then return first letter along. That's that's what you meant. What if I put it here? Where should I put it? Should I put it here? I don't know if it reads like from first line second line like that if so then maybe it would skip the and option and just take the or and still come as undefined correct it, it reads from first line till last line and it will first evaluate if input 2 is empty it will return this first letter and third letter so it won't even come to this part for it, for that particular condition, it's just like saying this. And uh, for the lack of time, I'm just gonna put it there. And yeah, is that fine? Do you find any possible bug in this this logic? If input two and three are empty, it will return the first letter. If input two is empty, it will return first letter and third letter. Otherwise, if input three is empty, it will return first letter and second letter. Otherwise, it will return first letter, second letter and third letter. Should I try running? Yeah. Yeah, seems seems fine. Okay. Let's see. Oh, it's already run. Is that fine? What we expected? So good job. Good job on uh, fixing two bucks here, maybe three bucks here. Uh, it's already 10. We'll end this session. In the next session, we can look at how we can get to this format, where even though V and A are here, we still have A, V, A here instead of just an A. Cool. Also, because someone said uh, they would want to try this at home, if you are able to find time to solve this on your own, you're, ha you're welcome. You, you can start showing that in the next session. But if nobody finds time and if nobody uh, is able to find a solution, then uh, I can show the solution. I mean, we can work it out together. Make sense?
Oh, okay. You're uh, typing in the chat. Uh, this seems all right. Yeah, yes, sounds good. Sure, please share previous recording. That yes, I just finished the recording uh, just before I started this session. So I'll just upload that. And then possibly this one also I'll upload later in the night. Uh, and then Darren says, can you share the spreadsheet from today? So Darren, it's the same spreadsheet as last time. So the link is already there in the chat. Fine. So um, feel free to leave unless you want to chit chat. I'll turn on whiteboard. I, I just had a basic question. I'm sure it would have been resolved last time. Uh, so you're using Google Sheet and doing this because this is JavaScript and to show JavaScript is is that the purpose or is there some other utility for using that dem uh, script inside Google Sheets? Uh, yes, so uh, basically first thing is uh, if you open a fresh random empty Google Sheet uh, which I am opening here you will find this right in extensions app script so everyone has it without installing any software um, because you would need a google account so if you don't have google account it's hard but uh, i i had to make that trade off but the moment you open uh, a spreadsheet and go to extensions app script you get this uh, playground where you can add your own functions uh, which last time we renamed it to demo we can call it uh, swati demo and uh, what we did in the beginning was just for a recap i'm just going to say uh, input output is equal to input and then i'm going to say return output and if we run uh, uh, bangalore okay let's write bangalore here and we are going to say equal to swati demo a1 is going to run through that and output uh, whatever this one outputs and the advantage of doing this is what i thought is we can do things in a familiar in a slightly familiar language which is uh, like um, this functionalities is equal to some uh, a5 b5 these kinds of formulas we have all um, learned i mean a lot of us have learned through exposure to spreadsheet software and therefore i thought uh, if we start with something we already know and we connect it to programming then it might be easier to connect the concepts Uh, actually, I had a doubt. Uh, like when you were just talking about this, is there something like a common structure for all programming languages? Like, uh, what I mean by that is, like when we talk about language, we have different languages, but there's grammar. That, but only the grammar sort of varies in terms of how we arrange different the you know, subject, object, and stuff like that. So, is it is it something similar for even programming languages? uh e, e, mm, what do we say so it's a syntax basically it's a syntax and concepts and uh, concepts are almost the same uh, there are only so many concepts available in uh, programming languages of course uh, people come up with new concepts um, so things like object oriented programming functional programming these are what i would call concepts uh reactive programming or uh, per procedural programming but uh, the way to write code to implement a certain concept would be considered as syntax and uh, syntax will keep changing like we uh, uh, in the beginning of this session we looked at a hello world page uh, i suppose you missed that daron but i'll just open it once more um so there on this wikipedia page you can see that 
the same concept uh, the same uh, problem problem is being solved in multiple ways uh, with different programming lines um, does that answer the question or yeah yeah i, I think yeah <laughs> I, I got the answer thanks so uh, for example uh, here what we're doing uh, where we have uh, let's say I'm going to delete this and I'm going to say uh, item quantity price amount. Yeah, and then we would have laptop to this is a common uh, problem, right? Uh, we have 40,000 mouse 10 300 and you want total you you probably come across this problem many times so how would you solve this what do i type here <laughs> spreadsheet is suggesting what we should yeah yeah <laughs> b2 star c2 so i is also searching autofill so we did that and now for total what do we do <laughs> just follow spreadsheet <laughs> uh so we are summing that now uh, these are all functions that we wrote um, although this is not very obvious that this is a function at least this one here's a function and it's taking input and output and uh, i mean it's taking inputs and returning an output so this is actually uh, a style of programming called functional programming um so paradigm which is best explained in wikipedia so this concept, uh, it can even be expressed in uh, uh, spreadsheet, right? Like we are, we are essentially writing, this is a program. Uh, this is a program that does automatic calculation of total amount and all that. And it can be expressed even in uh, Excel. So if you think about it, it's a, it's a programming language which supports only this kind of uh, programming, this particular concept and only with this particular syntax where it starts with equal to and we have to give a function name and we have to uh, give some input so all the excel formula will follow this exact format it will start with an equal to and there will be a name of the function and uh, the input uh, of course with the caveat that uh, there are these multiplication and addition we can do directly with which which has slightly different syntax so maybe there are two syntaxes that excel supports and uh, just one concept of functional programming but then uh, and uh, we, we were already talking about java java supports uh, only one concept called object oriented programming although these days uh, java has added support for other concepts so uh, different programming languages may also not support the same kind of functionalities uh, it, it would have different uh capacities and capabilities and paradigms supported can you uh, switch to the code that you just showed code for this one yeah or... so what is this no 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 that one only Okay, you can show the other one. I will. I will just have to check one thing. Hmm. Okay. So what? So what does const do? Is it like a predefined thing, or I I, I understood it to be uh, assigning value to a variable, for example, the space. True. You're right. That's what const does, and. Uh... Uh, so basically space is a variable here so is first letter second letter third letter uh, and const is a way to say that this is a constant variable just like saying constant but uh, they call it const you could also do let that would have been much easier in english language let 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 that let space be minus let 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 I'm gonna just make this space actual space and let's see the output the uh, it still works just the same way uh, there's a tiny different letter. 
Yeah, what will you say? What is const? Is it a function? Const is a keyword. Um, is a const let keyword. Keywords are special words in a programming language. Uh, a keyword is a reserved word which we can't use uh, for any other reason because computers have to understand us, right? So they use the so function. The word function is a keyword in JavaScript. Let is a keyword. Const is a keyword. If is a keyword. Else is a keyword. Return is a keyword. Uh, and uh, yeah, so in, in this particular program, these are all the keywords. And in fact, they also color it differently. Which is helpful. Uh, the other stuff are all uh, names that we choose. So those words are not keywords. So if you would have written space is equal to that thing without const, will it? What? How will it interpret it? Or like, will it work? In the case of JavaScript, uh, it will uh, it will it might still work, but it will still, in in other languages it it will throw error. Uh, so it uh, it's it's a basically undefined behavior. We do not really know what will happen. In this case, let's see what happens. I'm, I've removed that and I've saved it. Uh, and it's still working. So in JavaScript's case, it usually works. Even if you miss something or the other, it will try to detect it for you, uh, which is what we saw in the first time also. Like when we add a number and a letter, it will still do some addition and get us a result. So those kinds of funny things JavaScript tries to do. That means it's defining a variable space without const, right? So you, you just arbitrarily say some, some variable, like maybe number of number of cars is equal to eight or something and it will it will assign number of cars variable to it right correct and variable can have a space so we have to yeah so is it yeah one question will be is the is it the number eight or is it just a string eight and Okay. This would be a number eight. Oh. Uh, I put an inverted comma. So that's what makes it different. Uh, and the difference would be that. Uh, uh, what would be the difference? So we can do something can, like. Can uh, add eight like a number in the first place, but not in the second place, right? Correct. Right. So if I do number of cars into four and number of uh, string wheels equal number of string cars into four and how do i show this output now so i'm going to do logger dot log there's no print in java javascript there, there is but uh, the way to run this particular app with google sheet code is a bit complicated so i'm going to just do logger dot log this is our uh, this and that and for now let's not do any of this and i'm gonna say uh, i wanna call that demo with ding, ding. okay so uh, just uh, you'll have to believe me that what i'm doing is running this particular function okay whatever we wrote and uh, where is it? Run. So in this case, what JavaScript did was it it automatically converted this string eight into a number and multiplied. So let's make it clear by making it nine. Uh, is 32 and 36 so it did multiply although it was a string it did multiply that and this maybe if you do plus a rather than multiply by 4 you will conquer in it 8a or something 
in the second good no uh, in which case yep. it was a string in a string not in this one right yeah let's do for both no uh plus right <laughs> so it, it converted both of them to string and added it. So that, that those are the kind of funny things JavaScript does. Uh, and sometimes it will fail also. Um, if we try to do a lot of these, it will kind of fail. So if I try to say 8 plus A, and now I'm going to do into 4, let's see what happens. Now it says not a number, not a number. Because here it would have made it 8a as a string. And then when it is trying to multiply, now there's no way for it to make it a number. So it failed. Right. So uh, some of these are uh, like really language specific. So it doesn't make a lot of sense to worry a lot about this particular behavior yeah some languages will strictly consider that as a string javascript converted into a number right. and what is logger dot log i mean uh, you said that it prints right so logger dot log is a function that will print it in this particular execution log this execution log in the case of we could also Logger have Logger Logger function you said function yeah it's a function, it's a right? correct and that's so only applicable for environment yeah what it's only applicable for this particular uh, what is it called uh, javascript app script app script uh, environment uh, but console.log is widely so I had only showed the browser uh, console, right? So let me let me open that. So this is a browser console, which is uh, there in everyone's browser. If you go to uh, this is Firefox, so in uh, Chrome also is there. If you go to Web Developer Tools, you can see a console. Here you can do console dot log. Hello world. It'll work, but if you do logger dot log, it'll because uh, logger is not available for the browser that thing is only available in this particular uh, apps script uh, environment okay but why do why why do you have to put a dot log like it's the full function name is logger dot log or is it like logger is something else? dot log is something mm, so uh, what i will show you is let's get the equal away to like am i right mm. when i say that uh, you did dot uppercase that means you're composing two functions so dot uppercase uppercase was a function right uh, sending a string to the uppercase um Yes, in that case, we were running a method on uh, the uh, this particular input one yeah. variable. So when you do this, you are basically composing two functions. Uh, like, I don't know if input mm. one zero is. Yeah. yeah, it's a function, but the thing is, here you are composing two functions, right? So, is the same thing happening with logger.log? Uh, yes, uh, I think the answer is yes and no. I mean, it's not the exact same thing, but uh, you're right. So essentially, if I had return uh, in, uh, so let me write uh, this, uh, or let me write uh, uh, revise letter is equal to input one, and I'm gonna now I need uh, input one's first character, 
and then I'm going to say to uppercase and then I'm going to say to lowercase okay and uh, let me log uh, review letter uh, and well, let's pass uh, so actually, yeah. lowercase the first lowercase the first uh, arriving from the zeroth letter Correct. So the R is here, right? So yeah. So it's a, it comes it's a letter, letter, and then it did uppercase, and then it did lowercase. So essentially, when you're saying compose, you're right. It's essentially uh, composing or chaining the functions. And in this case, uh, the first uh, the first one it does for for example, let's just uh, let's not call it uh, has zero. Let's directly do this. Let's see what this one does, huh? Mm -hmm. See what I passed capital R A V I. It, it returned a small R A V I. So this for first uh, thing uh, is called an instance of a. Uh, it's this is an object, and then this is doing this method on this object. And then this is doing this method on this whole object. Uh, similarly, logger uh, dot log is a method on this particular logger thing, and logger here is a class. So um, this is the uh, this is the Google App Script reference, and uh, if we come to logger class logger. And it says this class allows the developer to write out text to the debugging logs. And you can do here, get log, log data, and log. So uh, we are using this log data feature, which is basically writing to the logging console uh, like that. Log -log -log -log. So you can have other things like in the logger class you can just um, what, what are these called uh, for example method okay so you, have, you will have lots of methods available in the logger class predefined so you can just use them right correct uh, right. i mean these are the four methods there are only four methods in logger uh, there i couldn't hear there are only four methods in logger. Before. Now there are some other bigger classes. So you go to Gmail. So there is a Gmail so class. Is, you can. What is what is clear clear doing? Clear clears the log. So logger yeah. clear will. Yeah. Clear will clear the log. This is a Gmail class. Gmail app class. You can do all of it. Draft. A label and get that Okay, so basically JavaScript has many people have predefined these things, so you can just use them. Um yes. You can also define them. Uh we can create a class. Uh, we can we can have uh, something like class Ravi, and then say uh, what method should we have uh, say hi and I would say console log log hi Ravi. and we can do this. So this is how you execute class dot something. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean I am not very sure if this uh, is the correct syntax, uh, but how it is. Uh, it says Ravi say hi is not correct. So uh, probably I have to write function. No. Uh, how do I write a method on? Uh, Mm. 
Yeah, um, I'm not completely sure how to write at this moment, but yeah, that's fine. So some... we need to. Um, I I don't I didn't understand what a class is for now, but maybe the motivator will. Yeah, we don't need classes. Huh? We don't need classes. We don't need classes for uh, this uh, this session or this series. But uh, I mean, yeah. if you want to learn about classes, uh, a good way to start would be to read up about uh, Java, the 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 other language, Java, because Java has lots of Java is entirely built on classes and objects. So a lot of Java related. So there is a really nice Google programming um, course by Google uh, on that's on YouTube or like where? Um, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I will try to find the link and send it. But uh, about object oriented programming classes and all that, some of these uh, nice tutorials are there. Uh, yeah, that's nice. Uh, actually, I was thinking what is the maybe it's uh, maybe it might not be very relevant now, but I was thinking what is the motivation of do, like can you uh, have a situation where you can do it, but maybe later it's fine. Also. Yeah. Later. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye.